Yes. Yes. Good dog. Thank you. Yes. You're a good girl. Good girl. Who's a good girl? Yes, you are. Rose is a Australian Shepherd. It's another cold rainy day, but this is what we're working on for our laying hens and probably our laying ducks, at least to start a tractor, chicken tractor, that's gonna be covered. And this width, where's my hand? This width, right there to there, is gonna be enough that it fits between my trees and bushes. So I'm excited about the ducks and the birds. I've always wanted ducks and birds. Let's go in the shop real quick. Oh, I was out training my dog. Got a new dog, her name is Rose. She's amazing. Hi guys. They're getting a little big for this space, but it's been cold and rainy, so we're gonna keep them in there for a bit. My, all of these are tucked in because puppy, oh, I can't get back there right now. I'm locked out. We're gonna go look at the bees because I'm, I've been thinking a lot. Today's Monday. I spent the whole weekend thinking and thinking about pastured broilers and thinking about rabbits and thinking about ducks and pond creatures and all that good stuff. And, whoa, sorry, spinning you around. I came back to my bees. So I'm thinking like, okay, chickens, all this stuff, it's gonna be easy, easy, easier. If I just did this and this was bigger and I just did something else, I did something new. And we, we have a recency bias where there's Rose wants to get in, where we, whatever we learned about, felt, saw, witnessed most recently, we tend to gravitate towards. And there's also this trap of, if I had more, I'd be better off. And with the chickens, I realized we're gonna have three dozen eggs. Right now my family does about a dozen a week. Sometimes two dozen, sorry, we're gonna have three dozen eggs a week. My family needs about a dozen. I called two friends, said, hey, it looks like, you know, somewhere on August 9th, we're going to start having a dozen eggs. Would you be interested for them at this price? Uh, that covers just, you know, my labor. Now, no, it doesn't cover my labor. It covers uh, my feed costs, a little bit of the electricity uh, when they were young, and a little bit of, you know, the materials for their, you know, housing and stuff. And, and they were totally game with that. And uh, I, I think I'm going to get a really good price from them that'll pay for my food and some of my labor. That's just, it's not a scale to get paid what I would want for my rate. The trap. The trap that I've been thinking about is that something new is better. I was like, wow, it's so easy to sell those eggs I don't even have yet. Just, you know, I, I didn't charge them. I didn't charge them any money and I, you know, they're friends. And I said, this is what it looks like I'll have. Do you want it? Uh, and I was like, man, if everything was that easy on the farm, if I could just sell direct that easy, everything would be fine. And then I remembered, we've gotten so many offers to buy honey. Uh, friends, uh, family, you know, local friends and family, we give, well, all friends and family, we, we give a lot of honey away, uh, but they all want more. And what a cool problem to have. So I was just thinking if I ran, started running my bees, like I'm planning on running my chickens, all of, this has been a hobby. This has been a hobby for years now. Uh, I did it when we were living at a friend's place. I did it the moment we moved up here. I Let's see, so we've got four years up here, one year at a friend's. I mean, I've been doing bees probably for five years now, and I haven't, I've overwintered some. It's just been rough. So I've been kicking around my head a couple options, including uh, moving the bees inside keep them dark, keep them below 40, and let them overwinter inside where it's not gonna be negative 40. Um, and they'll have more of a buffer and more of an insulation. So I just started thinking about that and the trap was something new. Instead of looking at what I have, Rose, good girl, come here. <laughs> Instead of looking at what I have and making it better, smarter, looking around me and thinking about what can I do with what I have? Come here, come here, love. You know, hey, here comes Roro. Good girl, good girl, yes, 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 good dog, thank you, yes, you're a good girl, good girl, who's a good girl? Yes, you are. Rose is a Australian Shepherd. She is a miniature, but they really don't look like small dogs to me. Miniature being like between 30 and 40 pounds, given her parents, so she'll be big enough that the eagles won't carry her away. Anyway, so that's what I was thinking about. This weekend was a, 
a lot of thinking, a lot of family time, a lot of reflecting. You know, I've got tons of trees, over a hundred nut and fruit trees now. Um, uh, definitely well over a hundred um, bushes, currants, fruit bushes, gooseberries. We're doing elderberry, goji berry, uh, let alone all the wild stuff. And so, you know, I want these new things. I want all this other stuff, but. I, keeping it simple is even more important. And after rewatching Joel Salton stuff and re looking at Jeffrey Lawton and the permaculture principles and all that, you know, the, the, the thing that would make this most permanent is you know, having a source of funding other than an off the farm job. So those are just things I'm thinking about. I'm going to double down on getting my bees right and slow turn, slow turn, slow turn getting my rabbits right and you know maybe these will just become gutter systems for now instead of um good girl good girl come on aquaponics so anyway just thinking out loud we, we already have a lot going in the big barn i have a um i think it's a harbor freight 10 by 12 footprint nine foot tall greenhouse that a friend pretty much gave us we paid her for it but uh, between that and all the fencing and other things we got from her, I mean, it was it was almost free. So get that set up. Uh, get back to my nursery starts. You know, I want to do more, but I, I'd like to do what I'm doing even better. So that means getting my rabbits onto pasture, getting, excuse me, my birds onto pasture, trying to breed my rabbits. I've had offers for rabbits already too. So bring my bee game, level up my level up. You know what? I don't like it when people who aren't gamers say level up. I love, <laughs> I love gaming, board games, RPGs, used to play video games. I'd rather be outside now. Uh, this funky thing is getting buried. Sometimes we have to do uh, special things when the ground is super frozen. So that's it. That's, you know, I'm going to focus on what I have and make it better. Avoid the big trap of more is better. These are all tucked in so the dog doesn't eat. Anyway, this is just a walk and talk. It's been kind of raining and that's great we already this year i've got the holes dug for all my new fruit coming oh, we're doing hops this year i'm excited about that what else do we have i got 20 antonovka, antonovka uh, apple rootstocks planted uh there's something ripping where did rose go oh, yeah. oh she's in front of me there's something ripping through my buddy's orchard nearby that really looks like a uh, fire blight so I want to try and just start stocking apples that are resistant to that. So we got 20 rootstock apples that'll make actually a really good crab apple for sauce, storage, pies. It's a very usable apple. It's not as good for eating fresh, but I like them. So we got those. I planted 10 chestnuts and we got a beacon, a Wodars, a Zestar, and oh, what's a uh, Harrelson apples. Uh, cultivated grafted apples on a nice hardy full standard cold hardy rootstock um, oh my screen just flickered wonder if that was a range up so we got a lot done I want to get uh, fencing redone around the field nothing fancy very simple just deter the deer out of there I'm probably gonna let the deer prune my trees up to that you know five foot mark or so because that actually helps with when the raindrops fall off the apples it can hit the fallen leaf with a, I don't remember, one of the fungal spores and that drop hitting it poofs up about four, four or five feet. And so if you just prune your lower branches up, it's going to be more work for me, obviously, to harvest them, but it's going to be less work to maintain them, which is definitely a goal. And then less worry about deer. So I'm going to get the dog back inside. Who's a good girl? She's just staring at me. And, uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. So get really good with the bees, get really good with my rabbits. Uh, first year with chickens, I got some ducks. I'm gonna meet with Dakota Cohen and talk about ducks. So I'm super excited and how to best leverage our water resources without the uh, bald eagles and osprey and Harris hawks and foxes and mink and fishers and weasels and pine martens uh, eating all my stuff. So we'll see what he suggests. Uh, I need to redo some front landscaping here, but I'm just uh, glad to be outside. 
Uh, oh, and nitrogen fixing trees started a ton of honey locust, thornless honey locust, started a ton of sea berries. My aronia uh, seedlings are doing great. Planted, well, started. I don't know if the stuff I planted is going to survive. We've had snow multiple times uh, here at the end of April. Uh, asparagus, rhubarb, we got in the dirt. And yeah, and I have almost all the annual plants I want to grow. I actually have. Um, heirloom well maybe not technically heirloom but heirloom ish gmo free local hardy uh annual seeds that are all open pollinated so i can save start saving my seed anyway i'm gonna let rose in let you get back to it but that's that's the game plan later